Is this Bible prophecy being fulfilled in Israel right now? Check this out. On September 16th, five pure red heifers made it in Israel, signaling the fulfilling of an extremely huge Bible prophecy that will lead to the fulfilling of end times events. The reason these five unblemished red heifers is so important is because their ashes could be used to purify the priests who will work in the third temple, as well as purify the third temple, which currently isn't built. But when that temple is built, it will fulfill the final end times prophecy of the Antichrist standing within it and declaring himself to be God, as mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple proclaiming himself to be God. Hello my friends, this is Lionel Anderson here with you guys with a brand new YouTube bit shoot video and as you can see we started the video off there with those cows, right? This major end times Bible prophecy that just happened last month uh, referring to the third temple. And what does this have to do with what's going on in the world right now with Israel and Palestine? It has everything to do with that, my friends. In today's video, we're going to be going over the truth about what's happening right now with uh, the whole Middle East, Israel, Palestine situation. Okay? The true reason for everything that's happening right now and how it all relates to the third temple and these end of the world uh, Bible prophecies, which just remember, my friends, the Bible is an NWO made book, right? Created by the powers that be with these self fulfilling predictive programming prophecies, right? I'm just going to make that very clear. We're not Christians here. We're just against the NWO agenda and we're exposing the true reality behind what's going on. Now, let's just get right into it, my friends. Okay, before I do, just gonna encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button. As I say, subscribe to survive because I cover it on all these topics, NWO, uh, reptilians, uh, what's going on in the world, occult, you name it, much more, okay? And what's really going on with the world. So please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. And hit the like button, helps Lionel out with the algorithms. Now let's get into it. Before we get into the third temple stuff, I just wanted to make a few points here number one don't pick sides in what's happening right now it is so horrible to see what's going on the hatred and the division which is exactly what religion does religion was of course created by the anunnaki reptilians and it was created to uh, keep us away from god really people think they're getting closer to god but it's actually taking you away from god and it's making you divided it causes hatred it's a great way to en enslave the minds of the masses and to control them that's what religion is religion literally in latin means to hold back okay my friends so don't pick sides because you're just going to be playing into this reptilian matrix and playing into these low vibrational uh, hate vibrations and you know it's so awful uh, seeing people pick sides wh whether it's israel or palestine right they're they're sitting here cheering on the loss of lives of innocent people that's who's being affected right now innocent people who are just civilians who are just minding their own business they're having their lives taken away in horrible ways when they didn't even do anything for the most part. Why? Well, it's because of an NWO agenda. This whole thing, my friends, is scripted, planned out, orchestrated. They know exactly what they're doing, and it's all to fulfill these end time NWO prophecies, my friends. And I'm going to show you quick evidence of that right now, okay? Did you know that uh, Israel uh, had a heads up that this was all going to happen, okay? That's right. So Egypt, just a few days before the attacks, warned Israel what was coming. Take a look. That's right, my friends. Not only that, but Israel is one of the most advanced militaries in the world, and they have uh, this amazing technology, this dome technology or something, that could prevent these things from coming into the country, you know, the rockets or whatever you want to call them. i got to be careful what I say here on YouTube. But, uh, and as if, oh, they caught them off guard, oh, they didn't see it coming. No, they knew, they allowed it to happen, they even had inside knowledge it was coming. So they allowed this all to happen, 
100%, my friends. And not only that, you know, people want to uh, sit there and, oh, poor Israel, and hate on uh, the Palestinians, blah, 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 Hamas is Hamas that, which, hey, Hamas is bad for sure. Uh, but did you know that Israel was actually behind the creation of Hamas? Take a look at this uh, clip of Ron Paul, very good man, uh, years ago explaining how Israel cr had a hand in creating Hamas. Take a look. Hamas, if you look at the history, you'll find out that Hamas was encouraged and really started by Israel because they wanted Hamas to counteract Yasser Arafat. And you say, well, yeah, that was better then and served its purpose, but we didn't want Hamas to do this. So then we as Americans say, well, we have such a good system, we're going to impose this on the world. We're going to invade Iraq and teach people how to be Democrats. We want free elections. So we encourage the Palestinians to have a free election. They do, and they elect Hamas. So we first indirectly and directly through Israel help establish Hamas. Then we have election. Then Hamas becomes dominant. So we have... There you go, my friends. There you go. You see? They created the enemy, which is what they always did. See, what you got to realize, my friends, is behind all wars and pretty much all the horrible stuff that's going on in the world, you could link it back to the Rothschild family, okay, my friends? And then beyond them, you could link it to the reptilians. But uh, did you know that Jacob Rothschild is very proud of the fact that they actually created Israel? You could say that Israel is the state of the Rothschilds, Okay. Take a look, here's Jacob Rothschild himself talking about how him and his family pretty much created Israel. Take a look. It's 67 words long, it's 100 years old, and it changed the course of history for the Middle East and the Jewish people. The Balfour Declaration, the expression of the British government's support for a Jewish home in Palestine, was sent by British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour to the second Lord Rothschild. I'm here in Buckinghamshire at Waddesdon Manor to speak with the fourth Lord Rothschild about the Balfour Declaration, what it means for Britain, for the Jewish people and the Rothschild family. The Foreign Office, November the 2nd, 1917. Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you, on behalf of His Majesty's Government, the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the Cabinet. So it's possibly the most famous letter in modern Jewish history, and it begins with three words. Dear Lord Rothschild, why was it that this letter was sent by the Foreign Secretary to your great uncle Walter? It's an interesting question because he was really interested in ornithology, <laughs> although he became interested in Zionism. And I think the uh, reason was this, that it was primarily a movement from Eastern Europe, but they didn't clarify who was in charge of that movement. And in addition, it was after all in Great Britain. So they felt that the Rothschild family um, should be the one to whom it was addressed. And Walter was Lord Rothschild and he was uh, a Zionist. And um, those really are the background reasons. So Walter received the Balfour Declaration and, and I have a copy here. And I wonder if I could possibly ask you to read it for us. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to put on my spectacles to make sure I read it accurately. His Majesty's Government view with favour the establishment of Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavours to facilitate the achievement of this object it being clearly understood that nothing should be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation. Yours, Arthur Balfour. 
And here it is, the Balfour Declaration. What do you feel when you, when you see it here? I genuinely feel it's one of the most extraordinary moments in the history of the Jewish people. Uh, if you think it took 3,000 years uh, to get to this. And of course, the Rothschild family then as now filled two roles because it wasn't just a leader of diaspora Jewry. It also played a very significant role in the early years of the establishment of the pioneer communities in Israel as well. I just want to... Re there you go, my friends. There you have it. So you better believe that this whole thing is all scripted and planned by the Zionist uh, Rothschilds and their family and all that. You, you better believe it. That's what we're looking at here. So if you're sitting there picking sides, ah, oh, Palestine, oh, Israel, ah, ah, how about you pick the side of the civilians on Israel and Palestine, the poor people who are losing their lives because of people like Jacob Rothschild and his family and end of the day reptilians. If you support the government of Israel and Palestine, you support reptilians. I'm sorry, you're just not maybe as awake as you think you are because you're still falling into the reptilian's trap of hatred and division and you're not seeing the bigger picture. So what is the bigger picture, you may be asking? Well, that's where we're going to get into this third temple stuff, my friends. So this whole third temple prophecy in the Bible, it says in the end days, uh, there's going to be the rebuilding of the third temple, the Solomon's temple, right? There was two before, right? But they both got destroyed. One uh, back Bible times, and then there was another one, you know, and then the Romans tore down the last one. I think Nebuchadnezzar tore down the first, and the Romans the second. And now, where on the temple mound, you got the al Asqua. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but you got the, the Islam... Uh, temple there. It, they they built the Dome of the Rock, right? It's on top of the Temple Mount where the Israel uh, Jewish community want their third temple to be built. And that's what this is all about, my friends. And according to the prophecy is once it's rebuilt, that is when uh, their Messiah comes back, the Moshiach. That's why it's so important. The Moshiach. But to the Christians, okay, this is the Christian part that comes in with the Bible. It says in the Bible that the man of sin, a.k.a. the Antichrist, is going to sit in the third temple, which would be the Moshiach to the Jewish community. And he's going to claim to be God and, and it's going to trigger the end of days. Okay, so it's an end times prophecy. And all this is connected to what's going on right now because you see it's a very holy site for the Muslims as well, the Islam community. Because this is where they believed that Muhammad ascended to heaven on this mount. It's the third most holy site for the Islam community. So you could see this is such a site here. They want it for their Mashiach. They want it because of Muhammad and all this. And you could see where the conflicts are coming in, my friends. And a few days before these attacks were launched into uh, into Israel, uh, there was, uh, during the Sakat, okay, which is the Israel holiday or whatever, uh, over 800 Israelis stormed the al Asko Mosque. Take a look. That's right, my friends. So that was definitely an escalation there. And uh, crazy to say, my friends, but did you, like I said, I'm telling you, this is all over the Third Temple stuff for the most part because uh, Hamas, uh, the operation with launching those rockets into Israel and all that, they, they're they calling it Operation uh, Asqua Deluge. Okay, or the Asqua flood, flood. And like I said, I'm probably saying that wrong, so I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But uh, yeah, take a look. That's right, so you can see it's all over that temple because you see the Islam community knows that uh, they're getting ready to build the third temple and like any day now. And to do that, they have to take down the Islam 
uh, El Asqua, Dome of the Rock, right? So there was a major Bible prophecy that just happened last month uh, when it comes to these cows that you saw in the beginning. So I'm going to show you that, what that's all about. Take a look, my friends. The red heifers that meet the qualifications to cleanse the third temple are less than a year away from being ready to be used in that third temple ceremony. There's reports coming out recently that these red heifers could bring up to a million tourists to Israel. Biblical red heifer could bring a million visitors to Samaria. The discovery of an entirely red such heifer is a rarity. Jewish sources state that only nine were slaughtered in the period from Moses to the destruction of the second temple by 70 CE. According to the 12th century sage Maimonides, the Messiah will offer the 10th red heifer. In keeping with biblical law, the heifer put on display in Shiloh is completely red and has never borne a yoke. Quote, this is an exciting and exceptional event for the entire Jewish people. We are already in touch with researchers and promoters around the world who are waiting to come here with large groups. We have returned to the site of the tabernacle in Shiloh and are bringing back the Jewish past for the future of our people. And when the Jewish people are looking for their Messiah again, they reject Jesus Christ, something that I will cover as well at the end of this video, an extremely important thing to be aware of. Now let's take a look at this clip and just show how absolutely dead set the, the Jewish people are on these red heifers and building the third temple. The book of Numbers explains that ashes of the red heifer are used to purify priests for their service in the temple. According to those working on the project, the ceremony of the red heifer needs to be performed on the Mount of Olives and in a place that would have looked directly into where the temple stood. The land I'm standing on, bought 12 years ago, fits both of those standards. Rabbi Yitzhak Mamo heads Yuvne, so. Jerusalem, dedicated to the goal of rebuilding the third temple. We can make here in this area the ceremony of the red heifer. That actually will be the first step to the temple. So we have the priest, we have the red heifer, we have the land, and we have everything ready. We just need to wait another one and a half year. It's interesting to think that right there on the Mount of Olives is where they could do this ceremony for the third temple in less than a year. And that could be right by the spot where Jesus talked about the destruction of the second temple and the great tribulation in Matthew 24. In verse three, it says, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? The dedication for the third temple on the Mount of Olives, which plays a huge part in end times prophecy, could be right by the exact spot where Jesus gave one of the most prominent verses about end times prophecy. Is the building of a third temple right around the corner? In addition to five new red heifers arriving in Israel last week, Israel has also announced the construction of a train link directly from the airport in Tel Aviv to the Temple Mount linking millions of Jewish pilgrims internationally with the future site of the Third Temple. The government distributed brochures in ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods showing religious Jews riding the train to the Third Temple carrying animal and vegetable sacrifices. This is a sign of Israel's government's true intentions, which are to build a Third Temple to worship God, which they call the House of Prayer for All Nations. And the date that they're planning to complete the train link, 2023, just next year, will that also be the date of the building of the third temple? Everything. There you go. And then, as you could see, I showed another video there, and they even they've even built the train thing ready to go straight there. You know, see, so they know what's going on, and so that's why they're launching the rockets in to try and stop it. But you got to remember the powers that be, the whole, the top elites of it all, who are orchestrating it all, they know exactly what's going on, my friends. They know exactly what's going on because it's their plan. It's an NWO agenda. The people below them, though, uh, the pawns in the, in the events taking place, the brainwash people who are just following orders, they don't know, and they're very emotionally invested. And see, you gotta realize, my friends, that this is a holy war that was, of course, uh, it was foretold in the Bible and whatnot, all that all these things would happen, but it's also foretold by a very famous Freemason named Albert Pike, okay, my friends? And uh, back in the 1800s, I believe he wrote a letter about the three world events 
uh, which two have already happened, you know, I don't want to say the word W-A-R, you know what I mean? He spoke about what was going to happen with those three world events there. And the first one happened exactly like he said, the second one happened exactly what he said, and the third one, well, this is what he said. There you go as you could see it's gonna be a clash my friends it's gonna be a clash between the Islamic world and the Christian world and pretty much it's gonna be a holy war okay and they know they know exactly what they're doing that's why you know we've had a mass migration of refugees and immigrants and whatnot from these uh, Middle East countries into Western countries right that's why. And, and don't get me wrong, a lot of these people are fleeing horrible conditions, for sure. But they know that it's going to be a clash of cultures and religious beliefs, right? And they know all they need is the right event, like what we see going on right now. And then they could initiate the holy, the holy war. Okay, I guess I said the word, so hopefully this video doesn't get taken down. you got to be so careful. But uh, that's what... Uh, is going on right now my friends and it's working right according to plan I know even here in Canada we're having uh, these pro-Palestine people throw these protests and they're saying the most hateful things you know like I said don't pick sides but they're saying how there are no c civilians in Israel that everybody deserves to you know be taken out because they're not there are no civilians so yeah so the little children and the women they're, they're not a civilian how disgusting you know what I mean? Do you see the hatred and the division that's going on here, my friends? It's absolutely heartbreaking and it's absolutely disgusting, but that's what religion does, right? And now just watch, just watch. The next thing that's going to happen is you're probably going to be seeing attacks uh, in Western countries by uh, people who like to spread terror, if you know what I mean. That's right, all in the name of uh, religion. And of course, a lot of it's probably going to be orchestrated. But it's all to spark this holy war. Okay? And somewhere in the midst of all this, in the very near future, the Dome of the Rock is most likely going to be removed. Who knows, maybe they'll blame Hamas. Maybe they'll say it's one of their uh, rockets that came in and hit the... Dome of the Rock, and they just say, hey, they destroyed their own place, you know? Really, we know who's behind it. But uh, it's going to get destroyed, and then there you go. You know, they're going to do their little ceremony with the cows, and and then it's going to be a perfect time for them to uh, rebuild that temple. And then, you know, the Antichrist will eventually make the appearance. And you guys know my take on that. I believe it to be one of the Trumps, right? I'm thinking it's Baron. But who knows, maybe it's just the old Don, Donald, I don't know. You'll see, that if you want to check out uh, my theory on the whole situation with Baron, though, definitely check that video out. I'll leave it at the end of this video when it pops up on the screen. Or you just look on my page, it's a few videos back, but there's a lot of compelling evidence there. But I do believe it's going to be either Baron or Donald, 100%. You know, they'll... The Trumps will sound the sounding of the seven trumpets, you know. They'll come create the peace first. See, that, the Antichrist is going to come and create peace, right? Well, what's Don saying? Old Donald Trump, he's saying, oh, well, in regards to the Russia situation there, he's like, oh, if I get back into office within 24 hours, there'll be peace. I'll, I'll put an end to the whole thing. And he'll probably say the same thing with this conflict. I'll come and I'll create peace. I got good connections. They respect me, right? You see the stage is being set up, and yeah, it's all end-time Bible prophecy. But as you can see, they're all self-fulfilling prophecies. It's nothing divine. It's the reptilians who wrote the book to enslave and control you, just uh, getting you to manifest their reality for them, and uh, just telling you what they're going to do before they do it, just like what they do with the movies, right? But nonetheless, it's important to know these things so you understand what's going on, right, my friends? That being said, I don't want you guys to be freaking out too much. I know you guys might be saying to yourself, what's the solution? How do we stop this, Lionel? 
I'm not sure there is a political solution in this or a physical solution by that matter. Because end of the day, when it comes to with this situation, they're going to do what they, they're going to do. And as you could see, uh, a lot of the world has fallen for it, especially between the religious communities. Oh, yeah. You really see the state of consciousness the world is still in. You know, we're so excited about the great awakening that's taking place. And, oh, everybody's awakening and this and that. But then all it takes is a situation like this to happen. And you get to see, oh, I guess maybe the great awakening wasn't as big as I thought it was. Unless, who knows, it's still pretty early. But if we see some mass massive pushback against these agendas and nobody shows up to... Uh, fight these wars well then i'll take that back but as of right now off what i've observed i've seen hatred i've seen division and i see people religious people mainly on all sides ready to go to war over a holy war all over who they're uh, all over you know which reptilian overlord is the true God. And that's what it, it's all reptilian overlords. Everybody's worshiping the reptilians end of the day and they're sitting there laughing. <laughs> Humans love their reptilian overlords. I tell you, they do. So it's a shame. It's a shame. And you know, it's kind of discouraging to see. So that's why I said, I'm not sure if there's a solution here because when it comes to people and their reptilian overlords, they will fight tooth and nail until nobody's left. If you know what I mean. And that's what they're gearing up to do right now. I hope that doesn't happen. But I think the solution here, the only one is a spiritual solution, okay? And it's going to be you as the individual getting in touch with the true God. And that is within you, right? The God is within us. And uh, working on the ascension process because there is an ascension going on right now too. There's some intense energies hitting the earth right now, right, my friends? And that's some, something that the powers that be know, and they're trying to stop it. Um, many of us are being activated now. Many of us are going through it and having these ascension symptoms. And there's going to be an opportunity, like a portal's going to open up at some point, the timeline shift where the select few chosen ones, uh, the people who are going through this ascension, the people who realize who God truly is within them, and who are able to raise their vibration to a certain point, open up their heart chakra, open up their third eye, right? Uh, those small amount of people are going to be able to shift to a much better reality once the timeline shift, the main timeline shift happens, or whatever, that's when the phoenix happens or the great solar flash. But there's going to be an event where the true chosen people of God, the people who truly understand what that is and who are going through these positive changes we're going to be okay we're going to make it through this we're going to have a positive apocalypse experience but everybody else will be left behind right many uh, end times prophecies from many different religions talk about this event they're going to be left to behind with this old earth and they're going to be going through the reset right uh, and they're just going to be transferred to the new 3d simulation and stuck in this time loop and they're just gonna have to do it all over again right there'll be a new one world religion you know and it's just gonna happen all over again and those poor souls of the low consciousness are gonna be stuck in that loop unfortunately and you know we came here to try and help them but uh some people cannot be helped unfortunately because the consciousness is so low and the black magic uh of the of the reptiles the powers that be is so strong it's like they're in a trance right because of their indoctrination and their programming so it's okay you know we're saving as many people as we can with our knowledge uh and the people who are meant to make it will and the people who aren't aren't right but that's all we can do so that's about it for today's video my friends uh i'm gonna end the video with uh with one more video uh just a little heads up that you know october 14th um is the day of the big solar eclipse that's happening and you know 
It's not a coincidence that all this craziness is happening right when a major solar eclipse is about to happen. They, the powers that be always do these big rituals and stuff on these days. They always do that uh, if it has something to do with the sun or the moon, you know. And uh, they do it for many different reasons. But yes, we're having something big. And some people, and I'm not saying, I don't do dates, you know. I don't do dates, but it's a fact we're having this solar eclipse. And that uh, David Wilcock there was... Uh, talking about how October 14th something could happen so like I said I don't do dates I'm not saying something's gonna happen but considering everything that's going to happen or that is happening with this uh, Israel uh, Palestine conflict maybe something big with that is gonna happen on that day since we know it is a solar eclipse and it has to do with crop circles as well so I'm gonna end the video on that note but before I show that to you just want to give a shout out to our sponsors. You know, if this is all stressing you out, check out Oweli's Ashwagandha. Okay, my friends? Ashwagandha is a great uh, natural herb here that's good for helping with stress, anxiety, sleeping. It lowers the stress res response. Has many other great health benefits too, like raising testosterone for men and so much great stuff. And of course, it's organic, non-GMO. I took it myself and I was feeling great on it. So, you know, not medical advice, speak to your medical professional, all that stuff, but I do recommend it. Link is down below in the comment section below. If you use my link, it helps me out and it's gonna help you out too. So definitely check that out. I hope you subscribe by now. As I say, subscribe to survive, click the notification bell. And join me on Patreon if you want exclusive content you don't get anywhere else. We got tons of great classes down there. The link is down below. I'm on Buy Me A Coffee if you enjoy, uh, if you just want to support me that way. Links are all down below. Thank you so much, my friends. Share this video with your friends and family. And we'll leave you with that last video. Lionel, signing off. I am expecting that you might see very, very significant changes even before the end of the year. And part of the reason why I say that is because of this. Let's go to this for a second. This particular formation appeared in Italy on May 30th of this year. And you can see it there next to the beautiful house. And here it is with some cars in front of it, another house, the same house, I think, maybe a different one, but off to the right there. And then here it is again from farther away. Now, this crop circle was deciphered you can see it was near Cassina del Colle in Brescia, Italy. Now, I guess first of all, I'll tell you that my opinion is that these are not fake. These are not made by humans, or at least not regular humans, and they're not made with any type of conventional technology. Uh, crop circles appear to be created by some type of strange process that manipulates every single grain individually. And when we see the actual crop circles, when we go there and we look at them, we find out, you know, they've got uh, bending growth nodes right where the right where one growth node appears. It looks kind of like a ball along the stalk. It will bend, but only there. The stalks themselves are not broken. It's only that they bend at the growth nodes and then they keep growing after they've been treated this way. So the crops are alive. They're harvestable. You can still eat the wheat and everything's cool. So when we think about this in terms of, you know, why would somebody want to make these crop formations? What's the objective behind crop circles? Uh, to me, it's, it's pretty straightforward. We are seeing a higher intelligence that is communicating to us through the use of symbology. And so in this case, what we're seeing is that there is what looks like a stylized eclipse. And I believe this, this, uh, illustration on the left here, yeah, it does look like what you see on the right, which is these typical illustrations of eclipses. And so, sure enough, there's an eclipse coming, as it says here, on October 14th, 2023, which is now disturbingly close <laughs> to the present. If you read the Michael Prophecies, if you read these books, you will see that there's not only a mention of this in the book, this, this particular crop circle, uh, I believe it's in book six, maybe seven. Uh, but also, there is a whole new way of looking at this in light of what just happened with this thing with Israel. So here we've got this 
solar eclipse coming up. And in conventional science, of course, eclipses don't cause any trouble. But in the new science, eclipses are directly correlated with things like the fall of kings, the overthrow of, of existing rulerships, uh, very, very dynamic, electrical, unpredictable changes. And even just, <laughs> just as I'm going to tape here, and the last thing I read online before I started taping is, oh, you know, Iran is going to support the Palestinians, which basically means now you got Iran against Israel, which starts to sound like a bigger war, and it's going to escalate and escalate. Now, if we lived in an a-causal universe where our thoughts did not directly affect reality, that might be true. But we do live in a causal universe. We do have a direct cause and effect relationship between our thoughts and between the manifestations of reality that we then encounter. And so understanding this is a key to sanity. Because once you begin realizing the degree to which you live in a spiritual universe, you no longer have to suffer within it. Suffering is actually something that in Buddhism they call maya, the mayic delusion. It's also called samsara. And suffering is not necessary. There is an elixir of consciousness that opens to those who seek the universal mind through meditation. And that is what I am proposing that we are going to do today. So when I see this very scary crop circle, and then all of a sudden it's telling me, yeah, you know what, you're going to have some type of uh, big, big thing going on on October 14th.